Preparing them for a world that doesn't exist outside of their own house. Well, also, if you're yeah. going to do this, then let's be truthful about it, because the Holocaust isn't about race. No. no. It's well, not about maybe race. Maybe it's, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's about, about a different it, race. But it's, it's not about race. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. But it's about white supremacy. It's well, about but going it's after not, it's not about and, and and race. It's it's but these are two robots. white groups of people. Well, they have, have to black people see them, them as white. And they but you're missing the point. You're missing yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your host. My name is Anthony Goodson. You're watching another episode of Rebrand Us. Hey, y'all, be sure to do a lot of commenting because we want to hear what you have to say. This is going to be a fun night. As y'all saw, we just played the clip of uh, Whoopi Goldberg. And we want to know what y'all have to, what y'all think and what y'all have to say about that one. Uh, tonight is a very interesting night. Tonight is the first night of Black History Month. So we are going to celebrate that the way we did last week. Or last year, actually, but uh, Punxsutawney Phil's birthday is today, or whatever you want to call it. So today is Groundhog's Day, Ace. Okay, is that is that who that is? <laughs> so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to merge Punxsutawney Phil in with Black History Month, and if he sees his shadow, Kim, you know what that means? We get six more weeks of Black History Month. Yes. <laughs> hey, let's go to the comments. We're going to go to the comments real quick, then we're going to go ahead and throw some of our first questions out there. Uh, first comment is coming, I don't even know who it's from. Ace, you might have to help me out with this tonight. But it says, hey, okay, hey, y'all, that might be Outcast. That's Kalinda. What's up, Kalinda? And then we got another, hey. <laughs> Six more weeks of winter. Who was that? Kalinda. Kalinda again, all right. Hey, Kalinda, how you doing? I still haven't made that call. All right, uh, so Punxsutawney, I mean, I'm sorry, so Black History Month, y'all, and we are going to celebrate it all month long. I think we got a pretty steady schedule. Next week, we have Ty and the show over. Uh, Ty is with um, a Talking Wellness Podcast, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, we have, uh, in two weeks, we're going to have Lance Larry's wife on. Marcella Music, I believe it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. She's going to play some music for us. And then because of you, following up that week, Tony Goodson and Kay Cobb. So those of you from Sulphur Springs, it's going to be a good, fun week. All right. Let's go ahead and get started, y'all. It's Black History Month. Black, his Black History, Black Present, Black Future. Okay? Let's see where we are in Black History. All right. Before we get to that, hey, A says Kalinda. What's up? Uh, who wants to go first? Tell me about Black History. What do you think when you hear Black History? Oh, when I hear Black History, I think about the history of Black people. <laughs> I've never heard a more deep answer. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, when I hear Black History, I, I just um, what it makes me think about is uh, a time for us to uh, reflect and appreciate. Uh, where we come from and respect and pay gratitude to where we're at. Um, that's pretty much uh, it, you know, just kind of uh, not forgetting where you came from. You're muted. Oh, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of Black History, um, the phrase from the song, you know, started from the bottom, now we're here, comes to mind. You know, I just think. Uh, it, it has a lot to do with our lineage. It has a lot to do with our struggle. It has a lot to do with us coming from a place where someone put us and still surviving, still, still thriving, still doing everything that um, that is uh, that we were put here to, uh, meant to meant to do. So um, just nothing can get in our way. Um, some things. Um, have happened in the past, but I think we just climb, we're climbing out of that steadily, and I think we're just um, it's just that as a whole, family, everything. So uh, I'm going ahead and go ahead and uh, apologize in, in in advance. I got some two, five, three year old in the back, so just got a little background noise, just just in order as best you can. When I think about Black History, I, I reflect on it now a little differently. Um, basically, let's just start this this podcast. It just makes me think about where, it's where people have done what where, what what they've done to get where we are now, 
um, but also the legacy they left for us, the, the trees that they planted that we actually have the access to now. But it also makes me think about what am I doing today that's going to leave a legacy for my kids and my grandkids. You know, guys say the same. So it makes me think about it from that perspective and also the successes that some of our ancestors had. You know what I'm saying? Me, me and I had a conversation today about how they was able to um, fight for a voice. And that was pretty that was pretty solid. You know, they, they knew what they was going towards. They want to be heard. It makes me think about now. What, what are we fighting for now? We're fighting for the same thing. We're fighting for something different. So it makes me reflect a little bit deeper at this point as I get older. I think that our black history, uh, I mean, is it defining who we are right now? Like the history that we've seen, is it defining who we are right now? I mean, we've gotten past slavery. Let's go back 60 years. Let's go back to Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, all those times. The hard work that they put in now, Are they? if, if they saw us now, how would they feel? Ooh, uh. It depends on what group, what generation we're talking about. You know, I'm sure there are people in every generation that they would be proud of, proud of, of course. Um, but some people just aren't thriving. In it. You know, some people that you that you look up, some of the behaviors that are being displayed now, uh, I, I'm kind of shamed that they have had to go through some of the things that they've gone through for that. But, so I, I like what you just said, Kim. You said thriving. We got to, I think what we have to do is we have to really define what thriving means. Because I think what we do is we see a certain people, white people, or whatever kind of people, and I don't want to throw a race to it, but we see a certain people doing what we consider thriving, and all of a sudden we adopt that kind of personality and attitude. So thriving, Eric, I mean, what exactly does thriving mean to you? Coming from where we come as black people, for, let's, let's just, like I say, we're, tonight we're going to try to go back 60 years. All right. So 60 years is what, 1962, perhaps? Okay, so we way past slavery. We way past the Harlem Renaissance, Reconstruction. Now we're right dab in the middle, right? Right in the middle of uh, the civil rights movement. Are we thriving? Eric? I don't know about thriving yet. Um, but I think some people have thrived. Because there's a lot of people that will be, we'll be spotlighting this, this month uh, for black history. And, um, and so I feel like some people are, but as a... As a as a black people, not necessarily yet. Um, and I say that because if we look at, look at the last 60 years again, we're doing things that they were able, were able to do. We're able to have jobs, we're able to voice our, voice our concerns more publicly, more more open now, you know, things like that wasn't able, we were able to do back then. Educational uh, op op opportunities are much more greater than, than they were back in those days. So yes, we are striving to compare it to where they were in 60 years ago. But in my opinion, for us thriving, and I'm, there's always been some kind of comparison, right? So thriving compared to how it was six years ago for black people, then 60, you know, now compared to what people are doing now. Once again, you talk about defining what thriving means. It could be monetary. It could be ability to deliver a certain way. It's a, it's a, it's, it could be how you um, how you communicate with different people. So like I said, a lot of ways to define what thriving means. So I would say not we ain't quite there yet, but I think the road has been laid out for us to get to that thorough of peace. And I like the fact that black people have diversified so much now that you really you can't classify one black person as all black people. I love the fact that we diversified so much. Let's go to the comments and see what they say. It's cold outside. Somebody ain't paying no attention to nothing what we got to see tonight. Uh, <laughs> Tony Goodson, she's right, brother, says Francisco. Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, Kayleen? I don't even have to go look to see who that was. <laughs> I thought I fixed this name thing. Uh, Francisco Davis says, uh, wealth gap is too big for us to be thriving, especially since we have over a trillion dollar spending or buying power annually. That's an actually good point. All right, look, we're going to take it to a more positive uh, route. Give me your absolute favorite moment in black history. Your absolute favorite moment in black history. Now, I'm, with the exception, you cannot use this one. And people, everybody listening, give us your comments. You cannot use when OJ won. <laughs> you cannot use when OJ. So the last 60 years, since 1962, what is your absolute favorite black history moment? All right. I'm going to let y'all uh, think about that for a little bit. But be before we get to that question. So BC Forbes, that's the guy who... Started Forbes magazine. Uh, he said history has demonstrated that the most notable winners usually encounter heartbreaking obstacles before they triumph. They won because they refused to become discouraged by their defeat. So has the black community become discouraged 
or do we think we're in the middle of our defeat or do are we getting past our defeat No, that's the question. You asking another question on top of the question we saw. Well, about. I just want you to let that marinate because I know you wasn't ready for that other one yet. Besides, I, I, I see I sent you this email. You should be ready for all these questions. So, so I don't know. I'm not thriving in that part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so said, are we, uh, I think I don't think we're in the middle of the feed and things like that. I think uh, actually I think we're right now we're in a, a false place. I think a lot of us are, uh, well, as a whole, um, I think we're kind of having a false reality of what we really are. Um, I think what happened is we got comfortable as far as, um, I think some people are satisfied just the fact that we're free. And some people yeah. are satisfied by that. And uh, so they haven't tried to take it you know, any further. Uh, so that's why I think we are right now. I think we're uh, living in this fantasy world and uh, we got to wake up. What you think, Eric? Oh, um, I don't think we're discouraged at all. Honestly, I, I think there's a lot of hope. Um, but I, I think where I was, where I want to, where I want to see black people go is it's like quit depending on anybody to help per se. Um, and I guess we have a, a little bit of a, of a victim mentality on, on some levels. Um, obviously, <clears throat> things happen that we have no, we had no control over. But on some, on the next level, then you learn how to take that power back, right? So you, right. yeah, you, you have the victim, that victim role, and you start taking power back. And there's not so much power you can get in this particular country, uh, being how I look with the skin tone that I have, obviously. But you take some of it back, and that's that's the and if that's where our next goal is. That's where our next goal is. You know what I'm saying? But you got to take steps. You can't just expect to be, hey, I'm slave one day, or I can't vote one day. Then all of a sudden, I run this empire over here as as a people. We can't expect that. It's, it's not. It's not possible. It's, you got to take those steps. They're just like a ladder. You can't jump from the bottom step to the top step without taking those steps in between. So that's that's my take on it. Okay, in four minutes, I'm gonna ask you all that question again that I asked you before. Give us a moment in history that uh, that you just love in Black history. Give us your favorite moment. I'm asking that at about 7:47. But before I get to that question, Kim, I'm gonna skip the question I just asked him and get to a new one with you. All right. So uh, one half of one percent. I've said this many a times on this show. That's the wealth that black people had in America after slavery. And depending on what study you're looking at, one half of 1% is the uh, amount of wealth that black people have now. But history teaches us that the men who can manage the men, manage the men who can manage only things. I'll read it again. And the men who can manage money manages it all. Let me read that one more time. History teaches us that the men who can manage men manage men who can manage only things and the men who can manage money manages it all is this where we get our focus managing money i mean is the focus money for us to be where we need to be for us to gain wealth for us to gain power for us to gain success is it money um i don't think so um i, I think how we gain power is kind of letting go and I'm not saying that all black people have this mindset, but I think that how we can gain power is actually letting go of the fact that someone owes us something, okay? Wow. Because let's just be realistic that uh, we're not gonna get reparations, you know? Everyone else has gotten it except us. So why not just move on and create your own generational wealth? And then that's whenever you gain power when you stop depending on someone else. So that's just in life period. That's when you right. gain your own power. And then, you know, and that's passed on throughout generations. So unfortunately, that's not what's depicted in social, on social media, in the media, uh, on TV or, or whatever. We think that wealth is money, you know, and it's part of it. That's a piece, don't get me wrong, that's a piece. Because you gotta have money to, to make money, you know. Right on. Or you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. But that's not the only thing that you have to possess. All right. So Francisco Davis says, my 14 year old daughter says for her, it was learning the truth about what happened in slavery and how some of it affects or uh, some of its effects are still around today. Wow. That's what he says, Francisco. That's my little cousin, by the way. All right. Uh, we don't need to gain more money. We must manage what we have better. 
And we have a conversation about that all day. I believe that Francisco also. So we're going to talk a little bit. How about both? Talk a little bit more about that. Remember the question. I'm going to bring it up one more time. I'll post it on the screen. Give us your favorite moment in black history and why. Coming up after we finish these few little breaks. Kim, what you got for us on Rebrand Her? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Little teaser there. We'll see y'all in just a bit. <laughs> Want to bring that curb appeal back to your home or business? Let us help you. Call Ace Power Washington at 469 337 4080 or email us at powerwashingace3 at gmail.com. Whether it's sidewalks, driveways, house or building washing, we'll take care of you. Call or email today for your free quote. We'll see you soon. The epitome of strength. It's more than just a podcast. It's a movement. All right, I may have made that a little bit long. Ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to share this page tonight. Share this show. Let's have fun. Get in on the comments. Let us know what you think. Question that was posed a while ago, and we're going to have that question answered in just a minute. The question that was posed was, give us uh, your favorite moment in black history and why, Kim, it is on you. Okay, so my favorite history, I mean, black history moment is, um, I don't know exactly when this came to pass, but I know that uh, coming up, we didn't always have Black History Month. Whenever they did deem February, Black, Black History Month, I think that was my favorite because it kind of put us a little bit more on the forefront. Even though we got the shortest month of the year, you know, we still got a month, okay? So I'm just trying to be optimistic about yeah. it because, you know, I've got to ask our kids to where they got to celebrate Black History Month. And um, whenever I was growing up, we only just had a paragraph in the history books. That's it. So um, it just became uh, a little bit more mainstream now, just like, you know, Juneteenth. Juneteenth has been declared a national holiday as well. So it's something that we've already that we've already been uh, celebrating. We didn't have a month to celebrate, but I but I love that. I have to look up the date to so come back from, come back to me on, on the date. Actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Francisco, when Jesse Owens put his fist, Jesse Owens put his fist in the air at the Olympics in front of the whole wide world, ultimate flex. All right. Uh, Kim just glazed right on over, rebrand her, but I ain't even going. I ain't gonna say nothing about y'all. Uh, Ed Russell. What's your, <laughs> Ed Russell, what's your favorite history in black? Black history moment. <laughs> I jacked that one up, didn't? I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say two, and, and and I've thought about this a lot. And there's so many. I didn't want to pick really one from, you know, stuff that everybody knew. But I'm gonna say my first one was when I was born, because that's a huge day in Black History. Just so you cocky, ain't it? It is a little cocky. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But the second one, but the second one, I would say though, for though, um, I like to think about current current things that happen. So. Prior to this show, we had somebody come and put something on Rebrandus, right? On the Brandis Facebook page. And it gave an opportunity to educate people about why black black history is what why it's about, why it happens the way it happens now. Because before then, like I'm saying, we didn't have anything to celebrate. There's a paragraph in the book, right? But now we have opportunity to to, to celebrate black history and to educate people why we celebrate black history. That's what he told me. He wasn't taught in school when we was in school. And so that's my, my new favorite Black Christian moment is the fact that now I'm able to, and we're able to educate people about why Black people are important to America and why America needs Black people. Mm. Ace? Yeah, they went a lot deeper than me, y'all. <laughs> uh, my favorite Black History moment is a uh, Petey Wheatstraw's bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> black uh, exploitation. Uh, that's, that's my favorite Black History moment. Um, but if I had to think of another, uh, if I had to think of uh, another one, um, 
I hate that I was using it as a go-to, but uh, I'll have to say uh, Barack Obama's inauguration. And uh, That's a good one. Very good one. The reason why is that entire moment symbolized, it embodied hope. Anybody who thought anything that couldn't be done or any glass ceilings or anything like that, that moment right there, it truly said, yes, we can. Yes, you can. No. And, and I just never forget that. I just remember standing in front of the TV uh, with my son watching that and just having this feeling of, you know. So. I was supposed to go to the inauguration, but they were talking about it's going to be zero degrees in Washington, D.C. True story. I said to myself, no, we can't. <laughs> I ended up not going. That's a true story. All right, y'all. I'm going to play a quick minute, clip real quick. Yeah, but think, think was, about that, Ken. How many years ago was that? It's 2020 now. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's history, but it's still recent history. You know what I'm saying? Very yeah, recent. It is. But, but what I'm saying, though, yeah, is I that it was never it was never broadcasted. At, growing up, when I was in, at Lamar Elementary, what about you, Dick? No, not really. I don't remember it. Mm -mm. Okay. Neither. So I'm, I'm just saying, like, it wasn't broadcasted. It wasn't celebrated at that time. But it was it was declared Black History Month back, way before the end. Because yep. I was born in, I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I just put it this way. Off the wall came out the year Kim was born. All right. What up, Ty Hosey? He said, what's up? Hey, uh, look, I'm going to play a quick clip real quick. And we're going to watch this and talk about the opening of those. So for the, those of you who did not see our opening, it was Whoopi Goldberg saying what she had to say. She said basically that race was not a factor in the Holocaust and yada, yada, yada. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to play the clip. The clip is really just her apology. So let's talk about that for a little bit, Kim. Have you seen the clip by, by chance? I did. I, I saw it. Um, I didn't really get a chance just to read up on it or, or go into detail about it. But I just feel like, number one, I feel like Whoopi apologized too fast. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, we do what we have to do to save our job. I mean, you know, people do what they need to do. But, you know, uh, in her defense, I don't think she meant it how it came out either. You know, so um, I just think she got some things kind of mixed up as far as you know, uh, race and and color or race and whatever, denomination. I think she got some things mixed up in there. I don't think she meant that, like she said. Uh, this is my take on that. I think that Whoopi was wrong in what she said, but she didn't say it with any kind of... Um, malicious. She didn't say it... Yeah, maliciously. She didn't say it with any kind of malice, I guess, is what I was going uh, I think she was just wrong. She was just ignorant to what she was saying. You know what I'm saying? She said that it's not about race. It was about whatever she said. But it was about race. And and I think what she did was she mixed up the word race and color. Okay? Because, okay. see, you could be a white man from America, Russia, South Africa, Germany, any white man. That's not, I mean, they're all different races, but they're all the same color. That's what she mixed up. She should have said it's not about color. And I think that she kind of got beside her thoughts on you know and so she didn't really fully get to say what it is she was trying to say and then it got taken out of hand y'all know how it is once you get in too deep sometimes you can't apologize for the truth you have to keep defending she apologized i have no problem with the apology i think she should have apologized for the for the mistake uh, or the ignorance of the mistake but she's you know and, and and so since she the ignorance and she understood where the ignorance came from and she had to understand that she had to back all the way back from that so, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's much deeper than that, I think. Eric, what, well, give me a comment. Way, way deeper than that. Well, we can talk about this all day from different, all different perspectives, in my opinion. But as far as uh, Whoopi and her comment in regards to what I think about it, um, I feel like she um, definitely was in the wrong. Now, with that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this little spin on it. She's on the show where she's paid to give an opinion. Not facts. Mm -hmm. But opinions. Mm -hmm. So, I, like I said, where I'm going with this, it's a whole other show topic, whatever. Not, it's not for today necessarily, but 
Um, you have to be careful who you say, or what you say about certain type, certain people, and certain people can make you have some consequences that you might not have saying about other people. So, and she happened to say it about the wrong people. Uh, for one. Uh, I'll, I'll say that, but I will go back to the point that um, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that it was able to be a conversation about uh, about it. Because once again, I've seen a lot of different comments on Twitter about people going both ways about what she said in regards to that, that support the fact that she apologized and wasn't malintended by any means. Um, she, she, she's welcome to educate. It's kind of, kind of like the whole Nick Cannon thing, but a little bit different than Nick Cannon. But All right, I'm glad you, I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Nick we. Cannon. We we gonna get into it. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to save face, and we don't want to get cut off. Ty Hosey, she said it on the wrong network. He also says she she should have saved those comments for BET Uncut. <laughs> That's good. Cool. All right, here's the deal. The problem is the the problem is she said it to the wrong about the wrong people, and we're talking about Black history, Black present, Black future. The Black present is we don't control any media. And since we don't control the media, we can't control what's going out there. Since we can't control what's going out there, whatever goes out there, we have to accept. Don't y'all think? So, unfortunately, like Dr. Claude Anderson says, that's part of the five-story building. There's, there's five things that black people need to work on before they start worrying about education. Actually, four things, education being the fifth. We don't control media. You know who does? The Jewish people do. And since the Jewish people do, you can't speak against Jewish people. What were you going to say, Ace? Um, you kind of hit it on the head, though. Um, I was, uh... uh Fran, you still listening? <laughs> I was asking, I'm going to back off of that. Um, <laughs> I was actually going to uh, say with uh, with the Wookiee situation, I think she made an opinionated statement, and uh, I, there was not anything offensive about it. And the uh, reason I say that is because the same people who are mad are the people who put millions of dollars behind the machine that pushes the word nigger. My thing is that America is still paying the people from atomic bomb will not pay black people for being in bondage from slavery. Chris Wright. Roland Martin just launched or will launch his own network soon. What's, all right, I'm glad somebody said that. I think that was uh, Ty once again. All right, let's talk about that for a minute. Roland Martin's going to launch a black network. What does that mean? Let's talk about black networks for a minute. Because, see, once you have the opportunity to control the media, now you have opportunity to control information. Am I right, Kim? If you can control what you have to do is you have to navigate the, the, the minds and the people in certain ways. So if if Roland Martin's gonna start his own thing, he can't take the same, you know, road that Tyler Perry and Oprah and, and some of these people took. Because they're all they're doing is they're money grabbing. They're doing this for their own personal pockets. They're not doing this for the the, the masses, for the images. No, because they're making money, making movies and TV shows. They're not putting out the right news channels and the right information. A friend of mine, uh, he's probably watching now, so I won't say his name, but I met him in college. He said that uh, he's from Detroit, and uh, you know he didn't know any black people. Only black people he knew of were those who, who were on, on the news media. You know, every night when he watched the 10 o'clock news, you know, black people were on there and they were getting arrested and so forth and so on. But then he met me. He said, man, you're not what I thought. You're not what I thought black people were. I was the first black, one and a half. He, he knew a mixed girl. But anyway, the media made him think that all black people were a certain kind of way until he actually met me. So I think it's our role as black people, billionaires, the, the major black people. To, to if they're gonna try to start an organization or whatever or a company or media company, they they have a duty to make our image look very good, and they have a duty to create a CNN or a Fox News or one of those to continue that that image. And saying that, um, so Roland trying to get his own more power to the brother. Um, I just thought you know Byron Allen owns several uh, channels. And um, have you ever saw anything uh, as far as what he's putting out or what he's doing? Well, Byron, By, Byron Allen, he's a, the problem with Byron right now. And this is from Fran, by the way. Heck yeah, things it'd be true in what they and what you say. Yeah, I agree with you on that front. See, Byron Allen, he he owns a whole lot right now, but he don't have as much control as you may think over what goes out. You know what I'm saying? Like he can put net, he can put certain things, but he don't have control over what goes out. What you laughing at, Kim? <laughs> I didn't read the whole comment. Yeah, you just read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry, friend. Let me let me get back on that for you, friend. Heck yeah, thing is that's why I stopped because that word thing threw me. Up. 
is be true in what you say, not just be first to report. See, that's, that's the point. Uh, that's social media. People are more concerned about being first, yeah. but not necessarily being true. Get Absolutely love it. Yeah, get, get the, the facts. facts. But, I mean, let's, let's go back to Whoopi for just a hot second. I know you want to move on, but just a hot second. I just oh. want to say. <laughs> do you th hey, you know what? Hold on. Put a bookmark right there. We're going to come right back. We got to do a little bit of commercial. Uh, we got to do a little bit of bill paying. And then, Kim, you're going first after Ace's place. We'll Definitely see y'all right there. No, no, don't write it down. You got pen, you pen and paper. You got a big old fork back there on the wall. I know you got a pen somewhere. Like that. <laughs> Just stir it up and get it right. No, we're going to keep this party rolling. All right. Speaking of rolling, Martin, see y'all in about a minute. want to bring that curb appeal back to your home or business? Let us help you. Call Ace Power Washing at 469-337-4080 or email us at powerwashingace3 at gmail.com. Whether it's sidewalks, driveways, house or building washing, we'll take care of you. Call or email today for your free quote. We'll see you soon. Deep down, I don't think any of us thought that we would see a conviction, even though it was on video. What's yeah. funny about it is, Herschel does exactly what the slave masters used to do back in the day. He used the Bible to get his point across. Oh, and stop letting TV raise the kids. And stop letting uh, you know sports be the only way out of things like that. Pace this place. We we just come. Come, right? <laughs> All right, Ace, what you got for us? Kim, don't forget. Actually, actually today for Ace's place, um, what I wanted to do was actually um, a uh, article that was posted since we're it's Black History Month. We're talking about Black excellence, um, and would you know it? Uh, my phone is blacked out and it's acting like it can accept my fingerprint to get back in. So give me a, a second here. All my aces place, folks. Man, this is crazy. Well, no, take your time, Kim. Go ahead. You got your comment that you want to say. You wrote it down. So, so I did. I didn't write it down, but I didn't forget. So what I was going to say about the book is pretty good at your age. Yeah, it is. It is. And considering, you know, nineteen so, <laughs> off the wall. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what I was going to say about the book incident was that, you know, they always want to downplay something when it happens to uh, us as a people, like like black people. Like if someone says something derogatory about a black person or about slavery, you know, then it's kind of downplayed, you know. And nobody, is, you know, has the wow factor. Nobody is like, oh, you know, I can't believe she said that, you know. Like I said, I don't think that Whoopi really meant it in that context. I think she just chose the wrong words, you know. So, and and it's sad. Like like Eric said, she gets paid for her opinion, you know. And so if that's what she thought, then that's just it. And that's just all, you know. So, but I understand. I understand the apology, and I'm glad she did what she needed to do to correct that situation because, you know, whether some somebody else is conscious of of the way. The, their actions make us feel doesn't mean that you know that we don't have to be you know so um I just yeah, you to know what while, while ace is over there trying to get his fingerprints working uh, one of the things that i always think about with black people is we got to understand one very important thing that like everybody have their issues too like we focus a lot on our own issues and if they don't address our issues then we have a problem with that well other people have issues now with that being said the issue i have with the whole holocaust and the way we treat the jews and this that and the other is it didn't even have it in, on american soil it happened somewhere somewhere else and we 100 percent catered to it so which is the direction that, that eric and i was going with earlier earlier i, I can't throw him under the bus because he looked like he was trying to he was trying to punk away from it sorry mom but um I think that they got reparations, and that's the power of reparations. Exactly. The, it, Jewish people went out and they bought media. 
media about is is Marvel. You know, all these different companies that owns all these different movie theaters and so forth and so on. So wealth is being created. That's the issue that I have, and we as Americans. We, we we dig deep into what they have. So, I mean, I don't know what all media that the Jew, Jewish people own. I know it's about 120 different uh, markets that they don't own some. Because, uh, you know, the uh, comedian that Ace was talking about earlier, um, what's his face? He owns quite a bit of them. But they use their money for good. That's the beauty of rec reparations. Nevertheless, black people must understand that we are not the only people going through something. Everybody else has an issue. And sometimes we have to just pray for that issue and be a, be a part of it. Ace is still muted, so I guess he's not ready. Uh, I'm ready. We can go ahead. So, uh, basically, I want to talk about, um, so, uh, LeBron James opened a, uh, his school uh, 10 years ago. And um, they have, uh, today, all, it was 136 original students. And all 136 students graduated, and each one of them have a scholarship. Um to, uh, it's one of two colleges, and I'm sorry uh, I couldn't open the article, so I don't have this stuff. You know the exact name, but I just wanted to highlight that. We, you know, we're talking about uh, you no know, Black History Month and talking about Black History Moments, things like that. Stuff like that needs to be celebrated more. You know, uh, we'll take the time to, uh, you know, well, America will take the time to say shut up and dribble. Uh, America will take the time uh, to say. Uh, you know he's radical because uh you know he he makes comments about black lives matter and things like that well i think it's time that we uh we highlight some of the good stuff he did that man just had sent 136 kids to college mm. you know who he started with he started with him and he took them all the way through the college so uh big ups to lebron james for that and uh let's see if ace place i just wanted to make sure that we gave kudos to something that is black history that's something oh. that our ancestors would definitely be proud of. I'm sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that Aces Place. Aces Place brought to you by Aces Power Washing. Please get your back for Power Washing. Call 469. What's the rest of the number? Hey, he sound like he at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Music is one of, one of the biggest ones, says Chris Wright. Francisco Davis. Yes, fam, you preach it. Now they got it handed to them. They keep uh it for themselves and they learn to manage it generationally i that's that's the thing I, yeah you know that's what reparations wouldn't be great for us just to hand us money they got to hand us you know with education uh real talk chris what right all we, right what do you think we would do with what would we do with reparations you know what would we put it into you know put it right. in the music is a big thing do you think we could put it in the music and make it and make it uh I think, I think Dave Chappelle's skit is highly accurate. I think it is very accurate as far as like reparations. Uh, unfortunately, um, we, we are consumers and not producers, uh, unfortunately, at this time. And I mean, it shows today with the, you know, you look at how long the dollar stays in the black community. Uh, so, I mean, uh, if we got reparations, we would make some very rich people in other cultures. All right, so reparation is a part of history, something that we thought for sure that we may get at that time. It was a lie. It was a lie told. It was just a ploy. But let me let me read this quick history quote that um, James Baldwin says. James Baldwin says, people are trapped in history, and his history is trapped in them. Think about that for a minute. People are trapped in history. History is trapped in them. That's probably the, part of the reasons why we as black people haven't gotten to just this great we thinking about this reparation and what if it comes all right so let's play this quick game real quick before we uh move on to rebrand what all right i don't even know if it's you know it ain't squid games uh, we're gonna we're all gonna see the cold tonight all right so it's a battle of good versus evil in history battle of good versus evil and i mean so it's funny because there, all these moments that i have written down are moments that uh, kind of define the moment, if that makes sense. And, and when I read them, you'll understand. All right, so I'm going to just say it. You don't have to tell me who's the winner. Just tell me what you think about this moment. The battle of good versus evil in history. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. Kim, you may not know much about that one. I mean, I did watch the documentary, but I don't know a whole lot of history behind that because I was shocked with the documentary, so this is not one for me. <laughs> all right, so I'll just go ahead. And, I, and maybe some of our comments can come in, and they can tell us a little bit more how they think. Okay. Eric. Eric or Ace, do y'all? One of y'all? You want to know uh, like what that moment means to us? Uh, yeah, in black in Black America, what does that moment mean? 
good version. Let me skip. Let, let me skip that one. I, actually, let me talk about it. So real quick, Frazier at the time he represented the good white man. Ali represented the the black was, man because that's he, what I was going to say. Ali was the you know the radical. Ali, he was radical. He spoke up. He followed uh, the honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad and his teachings, and uh, they really was rooting against him. They needed him to lose. And that's a funny part in history because whoever wins, the side wins. It's what they. It's the theoretically that's what they were saying. Oh, yeah. Ali wins and the black people win. Muslims win. All right, let me go. Tupac and Biggie. Uh, it's, no, it's no good either. Uh, uh, <laughs> equally, equally. Go ahead, Kim. Slim Thug and Paul Wall. I mean. <laughs> I, I would say I would say Tupac is more of the, more of the good in that. Um, just be preferentially. I mean, watch some of the documentaries, read some about Tupac. I mean, the, uh-huh. the deepness, the deepness that that cat had, and the love he had for people. And I said Biggie didn't, but I probably did more research on Tupac too than I did on Biggie. Um, but he he just cared about people. He, he wanted to free people from the, from themselves and from their situations. But he he was a very deep thinker. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I would say more the him in the, in the good, but neither one of them. I mean, both of them, like they say, they kind of both externally had some of these issues going out, and we saw um, it. We saw no. I don't remember Biggie really coming in out. That situ- yeah, in that situation, I think Biggie. I think Biggie would be the, uh, the good. good guy, and Pac would be uh, you know Pac was the antagonist. Uh, you know, Biggie re- ne- never really sh- took a shot at him. You know, no. Biggie was kind of he was kind of blown back by the beef uh, in it. So. Uh, uh, definitely, I'm, now I'm a Pac and Pac the great side like there, but we talking about that situation. Pac is definitely the antagonist. You know what? I missed the interpret the whole game. I get you now. Well, it's- no, no. I think y'all were both looking at it from two different perspectives, but I think y'all's answers are great. I would go with Tupac. Tupac was the, the greater good because Biggie was a singer. He represented to me an individual who just represents themselves, which is cool because he didn't cause any trouble. But Tupac, on the other hand, he represented an individual who was. You know, for the greater good, if that makes sense. You know, kind of like what Eric was saying. But but I, I agree with, I can understand both of y'all's answers too. I got Jordan and LeBron. Oh, LeBron. So what do we, so now, so hold on, hold on. So, we got, so what do we, what do we, like what angle well, are we coming from? The good well, you got to understand that in history, it's always two black men pitted towards each other. Yeah, Malcolm yeah, and Martin is another. Uh, the show. Can, um, versus culture. Y'all go back on YouTube and catch that. Right on. See, he created the show versus culture. He created that was his show. He the one who came up with it. I give him a versus game. And uh, anyway, let's go to the comments real quick. <laughs> Said, uh, "Blow it, looking at the wealth gap." I'm sorry, and thanks, Agent uh, Stinson. Correct, brother. One hundred. Boy, it's a lot of one hundred. Am I supposed to reply to what we do with reparations? Right. Blow. Okay. Am I now? Am I supposed to say all of those one hundreds, or just y'all can? No, okay, you y'all. just hold it. You just hold it. You just say. It. One hundred. You really believe it though. Hey, hit him up with one of the greatest diss tra- yeah. tracks of all time. It's only one hey, better than Francisco it's all day. That's true though. Mm-hmm. Francis LeBron James all day as well. Then she- laugh at all, nah, man. <clears throat> Boy, I had to cough that out. All right, uh, moving on. I think we're getting ready for rebrand. What, Eric? I know you about there. Now, another question. Was OJ trial a win or a loss? Oh, that's kind of tough. Um, Can it be both? I think it was both. Yeah. You tell me your answer. You I think it was both? I think it was a win because we had never saw us get off of that, even though we knew we yeah. did it. It was yeah. just the fact that he got away. It was just the fact that, you know, a black man got off like that, you know. But then the loss is um, it hurt race relations real bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what if he was what if we knew or at least felt like he was innocent Th- does it make a difference do, do you care do you care about race relations if he is actually innocent and they're upset we're upset we button heads oh I didn't care about race relations here but uh, yeah if you, knew, <laughs> if you knew he was innocent that, that took time to, and, that, and that's the thing about it we knew he was guilty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, still, we guilty. still was gonna, we still was gonna back him up, you know, just yeah. like because the media played. You know what? The media played it to that way, so we had to play the game. Mm-hmm. 
You know, because I think when OJ came, we were still looking for justice for Rodney King. Mm -hmm. All right, I got one more question. Said that letter after the buzzer went off, but we still want her to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's on us. You know, it'd be a different thing if he actually did not do it because I feel like he would have thrived in life, you know. But ever, yeah. since, ever since he did it, ever since he did it, you know, been a struggle. Oh, God don't like us. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, let's go to the comments and then we're going to go to our. Uh, rebrand as person of the day all black history month and he didn't get away with it if you look at what happened to him in civil court they ripped him from the rooter to the tutor should i say it like uh hey you're supposed to say it. that's your favorite comedian oh yeah from the rooter to the tutor <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all person of the day uh we got to spotlight one person every wednesday from black history month and today's person that we are going to spot, let's see, who are we going to do? Boom! Tony Goodson. Born August 1950, he is one of the first black Americans to integrate Sulphur Springs High School in Texas. In addition, his bravery led him to the Marines where he fought in Vietnam. Rebranded salutes, pioneer, and my daddy, Tony Goodson. Y'all be sure to catch Tony Goodson on his uh, documentary we're going to be doing in the next few months called Because of You, probably coming out around... June or July. Tony's birthday right. is one day after mine on August third. Okay. Hey, let's pay some bills. <laughs> then we are coming back to rebrand what? Want to bring that curb appeal back to your home or business? Let us help you. Call Ace Power Washington at four six nine three three seven four zero eight zero, or email us at powerwashingace three at gmail dot com. Whether it's sidewalks, driveways. House or building washing. We'll take care of you. Call or email today for your free quote. We'll see you soon. That's the foundation of uh, for everything. Because if you don't have love or a passion for something, you're not going to fight towards it. Uh, my kids are very young still at this point, four and two. However, um, teaching them to respect uh, themselves, respecting each other. Free Brandon's is uh, mission basically is to help empower black people to envision ourselves as better people. Russell? Yo, yo. Hey, real quick before I start, though, um, look us up on YouTube, guys. Go subscribe to the YouTube page with Brand Us Podcast on YouTube. Uh, we'll put it at the end of the show to let you guys know what it looks like as well because it comes up kind of weird sometimes. But we're Brand Us Podcast on YouTube. Go subscribe. Um, got some other stuff coming up, too. But real quick, I wanted to kind of talk about um, something that's not necessarily uplifting, but it may help somebody. Um, and that's one of my goals in life every day, try to help somebody, you know, um so there's a there's a thing that you know that comes up from time to time with talking about oh that's a white person thing or that's a black person thing and so one thing that's been coming up a lot lately for people i've talked to when people i've um listened listen to people uh, just videos i watch and news and articles i read but a lot of black people are committing suicide right now or hurting themselves and so at one point i've heard that was that's a white thing you know they get the pressure you can't handle the pressure so they kill themselves right but I'm here to say that the, the motivation may be a little different sometimes of why people hurt themselves or, or kill themselves. But the pain is still the same no matter what color you are. We didn't separate ourselves. The system separated black, white, all those kind of stuff like that. But we, we're all, we all bleed red. We all bleed blood, right? So by me saying that, I, I just want to say we, we have to come together on some, on some levels to give each other that same grace, that same gratitude, and the same love. And if I'm begging you guys, if you, if you if you have those thoughts, reach out to somebody. And I'm, I'm we have to build resilience too in our kids, right? Because sometimes when um you know a lot of times we have resilience already, you can get through stuff that other people can't get through. But your kids, if you have a kids today, whether you're old or young, continue teaching them resilience, continue practicing resilience yourself. So 
If, just give them something that they, they they're challenged by. Let them lose a little bit. Don't give them everything they want, because you get a eight year old, ten year old to give everything they want. You turn to a twenty five year old that don't know how to handle frustration, that don't know how to handle uh, distraction, don't know how to handle this and that, and so therefore resilience haven't been built. The other thing I also encourage everybody to do is uh, build a support system around you guys, uh, whether it's one person or, or five. Have somebody you can go talk to. Have somebody you can you can go to to um, for your problem. If you, if you a believer in God and Jesus, you, you got a friend right there. But I also encourage you to have a friend on a friend on earth too to go talk to that you can trust like that. Um, so like I said, this was not necessarily uplifting per se or, or fun conversation, but I wanted to reach out there because I've, I've, I've noticed a lot of people hurting and, and, and just not making the best decision about their lives. So I want everybody to be safe out there. I want everybody to continue to love on each other. Because everybody going through something. If you ain't going through something now, you just get out of something, you're about to go into something or you're going through something right now. So everybody's going through something or just got out of something. So just kind of fresh with people. Yes, the young lady that was Miss America of 2019, just 30 years old, shaking my head, Francisco. Yes, sir. I agree, bro. Hey, look here, y'all. <clears throat> Life, we're talking uh, black history, black present, black future. Life can only be understood backwards. But it must be lived forwards. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. If you want to be happy, do not dwell in the past. Do not worry about the future. Focus on living in the present. All right, so Warren Buffett says, Someone is sitting in the shade of a tree that was planted many years ago. All right, my question to you, my rebranders crew. You see, you see me flowing, Kim? All right, my question. <laughs> Someone is sitting in the shade of a tree that was planted many years ago. Is the next 20 years brighter than the last 20 years for us? What what are we planning right now? Anyone of y'all go with me? I don't think it's brighter. But I'll let somebody go first. I couldn't, I, honestly, I couldn't say if the next 20 years is uh, brighter. Uh, I, would, I, I, I would hope it would be because uh, we definitely want our children, you know, coming up in a better <laughs> place, better environment than we are. But um, that's a hard one there. I, I honestly can't see it being brighter right now just because the way things are and even the part that we're playing in what the thing is, the way things are. Well, that's a conversation that we have all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the part that we play. Like, we had the best parents. Wouldn't y'all agree? And our parents probably had some strong parents. And their parents had some even stronger parents. And when you go into slavery, they had some fighting parents. But us, I feel like we dropped the ball. I really do. I feel like our generation was absolutely wor the worst. I feel like we're good parents, but we're enabling parents. And then our children are now what we would consider the, uh, uh, what, what's it called when they're uh, privileged, the privileged kids, mm. you know. And so I think that's where we dropped the ball. And then, you know, we had this conversation many a times. Like, if we go and Google um, celebrities that were born in 1977, 78, 79, we're going to find you know, Usher, we're going to find Kanye West, who's a billionaire, let's go ahead and throw that out there, uh, six billion dollars to be exact, and all these people, but when we go and Google these kids today, the celebrities are all TikToks I mean, they're, they're not offering really much of anything, and don't get me wrong, if they were born in 2003, they're only 18 now but they're not offering well, much of anything it just doesn't take much to be a celebrity you know, that's like you said it just doesn't take much, it doesn't take much talent True. at all you know, um, I think that we kind of loosened up on our parenting or whatever because we felt like it was harder on us. You know what I'm saying? And we just kind of wanted to loosen the reins a little bit. Me personally, that's how I felt. You know, I felt like I was, you know, was bound. You know, couldn't do anything or whatever. And I wanted to loosen the reins a little bit for my children. You know, and still, still instill some things in them. You know, some some good value in them at the same time, but just loosen the reins a little bit. And so, but, you know, in us loosening them, you know, I think this is happening. But, you know, Absolutely. I just want to, I want to also say that, you know, I believe the children are our future, you know. So, and there's <laughs> been a lot. <laughs> Two of you had an opportunity. There's yeah. been a lot of trees that have been planted <laughs> that we chopped down. Let's just be, let's just be uh -oh. real. You know? She came, so, she came from the left. Oh, so she, she hit us hard, then she gonna just leave it there. Okay, well. You know, well, I uh, mean, you know, 
Yeah. Uh, y'all talking to each other and I'm talking to the audience. Ain't that right, Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, look. We're getting ready to close out. I'm going to ask one more question. I want to. I want the audience to answer this. Ace, this is really for you. So we are followers of Dr. Claude Anderson. That sounds rough, but he's... He, he's, you got to go to YouTube and get a good understanding of who this brother is, right? Definitely. He says that we need a five-story building. I'm forgetting what all the stories are, but he said the baseline is we need this, that, and other in order for black, uh, for blacks to get to a certain place. So I'm not going to use. I'm going to use some of the things that he said, but I want y'all to tell me what the baseline is. Black business, black judges, black me media, and here's a big one: black unity. What's the baseline for us to get to the next place? Black business, black judges, black media, or black unity? Before you answer, let's go to a comment real quick. Says, uh, Mar Anthony, what's up, Mar Anthony? I would say brighter. There are more opportunities than we have ever had, and children have the opportunity to see people who look like them. I agree good with you on that. That's a, that's a really good point. Really good point. All right, so the foundation that we need to cre create right now for our black uh, community, uh, Ace. I'm let you, well, Eric. I'm gonna let you go first. Black business, black judges, black media, black unity. You got 30 seconds. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know where we're going with this. We, we just picking one and talking about. It. What's the yes, okay. I thought that was pretty clear, but don't worry about it. Just <laughs> Mar Anthony says unity. <laughs> uh, I got I got dumped on in the, in the uh, comment. My, my bad. I'm sorry. So I would say black media. I don't I, honestly. I'm not my black unity. I don't think necessarily black unity. I think it's a myth. I don't know. If that's something that this ever will come together. Black unity, and honestly, I don't know if it's even necessary to have black unity. I think you go in a general direction. Unity means you. You. I mean, you. You, you have to agree on agree on them stuff, right? To go in the same direction. Like me and Anthony have a lot of different similarities in how we think about certain things, but we we veer on different specificities about those things. So we don't agree on it. And it's not necessarily the unity, but we're going in the same general direction. See what I'm saying? So I don't think necessarily it's, it's a it's necessity in order us to go to where we're trying to go. Because unity, them, I mean, that's not what I mean. You got to agree on everything that everybody say to go in the same direction. I mean, you have a general direction. But, um, but yeah, Absolutely. I leave it at that. Kim, Black Unity, you want me to read them off again? What's most important? What's the foundation that we need to create right now? Black judges, black businesses, black media, black unity. 30 seconds. I would say black 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 unity. I would say black unity all day long simply because if we have the media piece, if we have the judges or whatever, we all have to be we all have to be on the same wavelength. And the only way that we're gonna do that, like if we get a, a black media or whatever, and if we're all not all going in the same direction, then you know, it might veer off somewhere else, you know. So I just think that's going to be, that should be the foundation and the, and the rest of that comes in line. All right, let's go ahead and wake him up. He got two more pieces to do. Ace, what do you think? Black I'll unity, black up. media? Uh, black unity. Uh, it's got to be black unity. Uh, just point blank. Um, we we got to, we, it's been proven time and time. We ain't together. Uh, anything we do is going to fail or it's not going to uh -huh. go as far as, we, as we're trying to get you know, we got to get behind each other as a community, and we have to push each other, and we have to support each other until we all get to where we're trying to get to. Let me, let, I'm going to go. Me, can I rebuttal real quick? I would just say, what does that look like, first of all? And then just go from there. What does, that, what does black unity look like? Well, you know what? I don't know because we haven't never really had it. We got, we, we've had it. We've had it. Well, and you got to have a picture of what it looks like. Otherwise, you're going towards a myth again because if you don't know what it looks like, you have to have a, you have to know what well, it looks no, like. I it. guess I guess black unity would look like uh, civil uh, rights. Selma, yeah. That like, era. Uh, civil rights or <laughs> the uh you know, the Million Man March, uh Molly King uh marching in Selma, you know, uh everybody behind the bus boycott. You know, we say, Hey, we not sending our money here and nobody sent their money and they got results. You know, uh so I think that's your picture of black unity. Well if I had to pick mine, I think I'm gonna go with media as well. Because I think media creates unity. I think that the reason why white people dislike as a whole black people is because the media. The reason why black people, my friend whose name I didn't say earlier, uh, had a certain image of black people is because of media. I think the media also controls us. You know, I feel like if we uh, if we see enough positive in images on television, Jackie Robinson, Barack Obama, we they, all that information was told to us by the media. 
We saw that newspapers and so forth. When we read and see and we're motivated by the people that we see on television that are doing great things. Eventually, I think we come together. Unity? I don't know how important unity is. We're not united necessarily with but white America, Mexican, whatever, the rest of America, but yet the country is still doing this thing and we're all individually still having our, our successes. I think unity is the thing that comes afterwards. Because like Eric said, unless we can come up with a concrete look at what unity looks like, I don't believe we're just going to be fighting to get that. So at least let's grab something tangible. Yeah, it's too abstract for me, but I agree. I, I, I want that. I just, don't, I just don't know what it looks like right now. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, hey, look. Hey, yo, Ace, who do we have on the show next week? Uh, I'm discussing the topics that have to deal with the black family. So you know the food or the drink is good when the person says squalor instead of swallow. Uh, we're going to have an interview with librarians with Tourette syndrome. And the name of the show is going to be titled Breaking the Rules. That we will have their mics muted most of the time. Married couples that swing at the playground. Are they confused or just risk takers? Giggity giggity. Uh, we gonna see, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> you know, right. Adrian, the Ace Stinson, and the rest of the Rebranders crew live Wednesdays at 7 30 p.m. Central on YouTube and Instagram at Rebranders Podcast, Facebook at Rebranders, or Rebranders.org. I work too hard. Look, I work too hard for this <laughs> stuff, man. All right, Ace. Hey, look, communication plus unity equals community. Mar Anthony right. Hubbard. Oh, man. Mar, you, you on it today, Jack. Yeah, you on it today. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yo, Ace, who do we have on the show next week? Uh, next week, we are actually going to be uh, interviewing people that are so ugly, their faces are considered to be harassing. <laughs> we just going to talk to them and how they fit in in society. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty blunt there, Ace. I like it though. I wish you could have seen Eric's face when you said that. <laughs> that was that was good. When I said it, when I said it, everybody automatically talked to somebody because they knew they were like, you know what? Uh, <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right, hey, look, um, Next week, we got a really good show. Uh, we have uh, a Talking Wellness Podcast that's going to be on this. Um, Ta Tahosi Helen, I don't know Helen's last name, and, and Sid Kofer, honestly, I believe it's his last name. Honestly, Helen. Honestly, Helen. Y'all got to check them out. They'll be on tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, on Talking Wellness Podcast. A lot of fun. I've been on that show a lot. We're going to be on next week. We're talking music. So if you know anything about music or if you like music, that's the show to be on. Y'all can probably school us. But until next week, we thank y'all for joining us. Everybody, stay warm. Go get all your wood. Be safe. Don't go to work tomorrow. And if you get fired, no, let me rephrase that. Go to work tomorrow if you're going to get fired. <laughs> we'll see y'all. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, they're short. Yeah. <laughs>